Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Noved Player, and first of all, happy Pride Month. Speaking of Pride Month, we have the director of the Pride VR community, Miss Frizzy. Miss Frizzy, welcome to the Noved Hello. Notes. Yeah, welcome in. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you're doing well. <laughs> it's lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. So, you know, for the general audience listening at home, you know, kind of explain who you are and uh, what exactly is Pride VR. Mm, absolutely. So I am the community leader of the Pride VR. We are an LGBTQ focused community. Our, our mission is around helping folks find their way into the VR space that in the LGBTQ community. So we like to operate a lot at kind of the, the entry level ways to VR one, well, particularly VR chat at the moment. But as a lot of us know, those can be kind of rough spaces to be and not very conducive to our community. So we, we try to provide a, a really a nice, chill and peaceful moderated, at the moment, moderated black cat instance that we call the queer cat off the large LGBTQ group. But we, we do we try to cultivate public events for the community. We're working on a few different Pride events. I'm hoping to cultivate community resources as well. Things like classes maybe people can come for at Pride VR and such. Uh, I'm actually by trade a software uh, developer. I have extensive uh, background in full stack web development. So. That's something I've been thinking I can maybe teach, or hopefully, you know, there's a, a group we're hoping, I'm hoping to partner with, um, be like TAing for their main thing that goes on, but I'll have a little TA class going on and ideally teach people full stack development kind of thing. But um, yeah, this is kind of the nutshell of what we are. We do the gay things and we try <laughs> to be there to provide peaceful spaces that are, well, conducive to the, our broader community in general. Try to make sure we don't stifle folks and that we're just there to make sure things stay peaceful. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And I was going to say, you know, first of all, kudos to you and the Pride VR team for, you know, managing a black cat instance of all places. Um, Cause I know, yeah. I, I know that's no easy feat, you know? So, what what exactly brought you you personally into VR chat? Well, unlike maybe quite a few folks doing things like this, I am actually uh, yeah very new to VR chat. Um, I only got into VR chat a year and six months ago or so. Heavily socially anxious me, more used to you know working off and behind the scenes to support the team kind of deal and not having to heavily socially interact with uh, broader folks was uh, very off put by the idea of a well, game that literally had chat in the name and that clearly socializing was a huge factor of it. So I didn't really check it out for the longest time. I mean, I would occasionally see some of my Steam friends in there and like maybe talk to them about it once or twice. And they're like, yeah, I just play games in there. I'm just like, oh, OK, I don't know. I guess what drew me to it finally was just, you know, that's a good question. I guess I, I finally I moved to a kind of remote area. So it's been now harder to actually be able to get out and socialize with people and normal physical spaces because of that. So I just, yeah, finally got over that hump of the hill and decided to try it out. And I've just still been here ever since. OK. Fair enough. Uh, I was going to say in regards to that, you know, for some moving into a remote place, you know, and mm -hmm. going into VR, uh, obviously, yeah, the VR chat is a, it's a very interesting place. Uh, and a lot of different people have a lot of different like origins of how they, you know, found out about VR chat. So I, I guess I'll ask, you know, was there any like specific, like, uh, like creators or like inspirations to like actually getting a headset and like jumping onto this platform? Hmm. Hmm. Not actually specifically. Uh, personally, there was, I, I immediately saw like when I started to get into VR chat, I immediately saw the value it could have and uh, some of the body dysphoria and gender dysphoria issues I've been struggling with. So, in addition to helping with, um, you know, 
connecting, meeting new folks, socializing, and getting to like socialize when I haven't really had that chance to be able to. Um, it's been really valuable in that sense. So that's part of what like drove, that's really what drove me to actually getting a VR headset. But in terms of creators or oh, VR chat landscape, I, I came into things so quickly that I, I, I barely had time to know any of who was what or who was doing what and things like that of that nature. Like the first large event we had had a few large names in it that I had really no very little comprehension of just how much they actually were in the VR chat, like on a social landscape. Yeah, I'll say, so to kind of, you know, just throw yourself into the VR chat, you know, metaverse to say, uh, it's definitely an interesting thing, especially if you're just kind of thrown to the wolves. So I, I got to ask, uh, in, in mm. your opinion, you know, when you first launched, you know, a headset or if you played desktop first, um, mm -hmm. when you first joined VR chat, what was your, what was your initial thoughts? Oh uh, yeah. Well, it was interesting. I, I. Because my intro to VR chat was yeah desktop mode, and I just kind of bounced around these popular roles, trying to find folks to connect with, and uh, <laughs> they weren't really seeming the best of options for for doing that sort of thing. Um, you know, bounce around like things like Black Hats or just B clubs or something like that, because it's just what was popular. I didn't know who or where to go reach out to. And this is part of the origin for the mission of Pride VR is it ultimately stood out to me as well. VR chat has a little bit of an onboarding issue for the community. You go to these public spaces and they can be just really toxic. So oof, yeah, uh, eventually though, I, I joined one of the community groups of the like LGBTQ letters reasons though just didn't feel like a good fit and and full of friends i had from there kind of decided we were looking to cultivate something that was a little bit broader base for the community eventually that snowballed into the uh, festival idea we had last year and and i kind of realized that uh because back then i hadn't I was still just really discovering the VR chat landscape. And so like back then we we're, were talking about like an 18 plus like LGBTQ club and, um, you know, sounded great. But then I, I started learning more and more of the different communities out there and, and seeing these deeper uh, rooted communities that you just got to look under the surface for and realizing they're already like super inclusive. They're already, there's so many hella gay <laughs> spots in VR. VR is just full to the brim of gay. You just like, <laughs> it's everywhere. You just got to know where to look pretty much. You got to be able to get past that surface level. So that's when it started to click to me that, well, VR chat and VR in general probably needed to find, just develop better, more avenues to helping the community find their ways to deeper communities so that's what i started to formulate pride vr's mission around and kind of being there to be a place for people to hop on and i guess stay as long as they want you know explore vr chat from there or just bounce off to a, a deeper community that they found because that's that's all we're that's our core mission you know if i've done that then i'm happy at the end of the day and it's been really heartwarming because i've I've seen that happen like um, time and time again. It's been really beautiful. Fair, no, absolutely. I was gonna say it's definitely a definitely an amazing thing to say the least when it comes to that. You know, building such a broader community for all to enjoy realistically. You know, so speaking of that, like you've you've done a few events. You know, making like from making the community. You know, kind of moving on into the event side of things. So, you know, you were talking about uh, the Queer Cat. So kind of, you know, what exactly do you guys do, you know, in this group instance of the Black Cat? Like what what makes the Queer uh -huh. Cat so unique, I guess, <laughs> in terms? Okay, well, the Queer Cat was, uh, as far as I know, the, the first regularly moderated Black Cat instance. 
Um, I went in there and just started moderating it for the LGBTQ community. Um, because to me, as I was kind of getting it before with some of the really popular spaces that I went through were, well, black hats. So when I was thinking about how can I help the community get into VR chat, I was like, why not go to the black hat and moderate it in an instance? And well, let's see what happens. And because I, I passed through there, so it's bound that a lot of others are probably in the community are probably passing through there too. So I just went, started it up. It, well, just became kind of an incident. A lot of folks in the community started showing up. Got a bunch of them wanting to help out with moderation and stuff. So from, from there, um, because from there, pretty much an actual kind of team really started to formulate around Pride VR as well. Because before it was, it was like I had gotten handfuls of people here and there to kind of agree to possibly trying to uh, help out with Pride VR's mission. But back then, it's, it was kind of difficult to get serious attention from folks for like helping out on staff. Um, you, you talk about these broad stroke mission objectives and ideas, and uh, we had kind of developed a, a partnership with a large LGBTQ group. And they see that, but then they also see a Discord back then, which was, uh, you know, 100 people and change kind of thing. Since in the early days, we kind of, I had this idea for a big event that came before any large-scale community development for Pride VR. So there weren't really people around the Discord. Most of them were a bunch of musicians and DJs. I mean, they showed up for the event, and it was amazing, but um, it didn't help cultivate a kind of identity for us. It didn't help, like, develop who we are as a community, how we were going to, like, really, truly give back to VR chat. Um, and that's kind of part of the drive for the career cat also was building that space was helping do something for the VR chat community. It was helping us as a LGBTQ community find a way into these deeper VR spaces. Fair enough. Fair enough. I say that's, I mean, that's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing, you know, and as a lot of you know both vr and irl lgbtq communities can can vouch it's it's very hard and if i speak out of line please throw a brick at me you know but it, it's mm. it's very difficult to find certain communities you know that fit so to to have one that's meant for you know lgbtq as a whole it's definitely a it, it's a it's a great thing you know it, it's one of the things at least in my personal opinion that you know should be looked on in you know solitude not solitude what's the word uh solace not solitude solace you know it, it to have mm -hmm. a place where people can belong is definitely an amazing thing to say the least so in, in regard in yeah. regards to that um i know because we were talking a little bit off screen you know we you were talking about uh actually because i failed to do my research yeah it happens it happens with every episode so let's talk about one of uh one of the bigger events you guys have held um so last year uh back in 2023 uh you guys held kind of a bigger um event featuring some pretty big names so what what exactly you know what did that event entail oh wow. um yeah it's it feels almost like a fluke of nature that that had even happened. I don't, to this day, kind of don't quite understand why some of them just kind of jumped on board and showed up for this uh, kind of random no-name community group event. But it was, I guess, interesting that a lot of them did. Uh, part of it was, um, it was a strong drive between myself and... Uh, another event person in the community, uh, Kerbel, um, kind of, we just went into super hyper focus mode for 30 days and planned out a bunch of the, planned out and coordinate a bunch of those musicians and cultivate a little website and set up the, the whole basic donation campaign. 
Mm, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was interesting. It definitely didn't like pan out as kind of the original event idea. It definitely exploded a bit more than what I was like kind of, I guess, initially going for, which was something a little quainter and ideally on, on the world we hadn't kind of developed. But that hadn't really panned out, and we ended up uh, at uh, the VRU venue instead. Um, and that was really, really lovely of them over there to have uh, offered up that space in a last-minute pinch kind of situation. Um, but it unfortunately, it was also PC only at the time, so we couldn't we couldn't be a truly inclusive event kind of deal back then. Pride VR was still kind of cultivating as a eighteen plus space initially. Um, that was before the whole developing the public mission, like public world mission. So it was definitely a different kind of vibe atmosphere to what it was kind of pumped out then comparatively to what's kind of developed because um going on as i mean came down to two people kind of powerhousing it through i wasn't really i wasn't looking to develop a team of like rock stars trying to create massive events i i wanted a kind of community driven team that's going to drive the events that they want to see and build things that are going to help the community find their way into VR. And I kind of realize like big festivals like that just don't really, they don't have that effect. They don't, they aren't the ways that people are finding their way into VR. People want to play games. They want to go watch stuff. They want to, they want to hang out. You know, that's what the vast majority of a lot of people want to do. So big events like that, like they're, they're nice, but you know, um, I feel cultivating to these other aspects of VR were, were definitely way a higher priority to helping our community find their way in and immediately providing a, a, a way that they, a space for them to be, you know, doing these bulk things that they really want to do without getting harassed to such a degree that you would in normal publics. Fair. I was going to say, you know, kind of, kind of to dive back a little bit because I, I do, I do find some importance when it comes to bigger events. So, mm -hmm. and obviously it, it's all personal taste personally. Um, so I guess one of the questions I want to ask in that regard, you know, if there was it, let's say, let's say there was like no limits to what you could do yeah. when it comes to like, say, you know, everything that could go right would go right. If you had a chance to essentially recreate some type of pride festival of some sort, you know, maybe featuring like different creators and different other things, you know, would that be something that oh, you guys would be interested in? Oh uh, yeah. That was actually the original idea of the festival was to be something that was not, not only just like a bit of music. It was like a proper showcasing of artistic talent of the community in VR. So so, I yeah, um, that is definitely something I would love to cultivate, but it's it's got to be with a community-driven team, someone that can grow organically. Absolutely. No, and that makes so sense. So, we're getting there, and I've got real confidence in um, the set of folks that have been coming together recently to help out that will uh, hopefully be able to cultivate something like that for next year. This year, we're focusing on a little bit smaller scale stuff, a little bit more spread out the end of the month. No, absolutely. And sometimes I think any big organization, you know, or staff from any big organization can agree with this. You know, sometimes you have to take a step back, analyze what you need to do, hmm. and then move forward based on that. You know, you can't just do back to back to back oh, big yeah. events because, you know, that's going to cause burnout. That's going to cause drag more than anything. Mm -hmm. You know, meanwhile, you know, to take a step back, analyze it, maybe do some small events here and there, you know, like the Queer Cat or, you know, uh, maybe yeah. like a game night or like maybe a small like performance night or something, something of that caliber, mm -hmm. you know, definitely would be, you know, more beneficial than to force back-to-back -back big events you know and that's at least in my mm -hmm. opinion that's that's definitely a better thing so kudos to you you know taking that step back to analyze that because 
some people, some creators, you know, my, myself included. Yes, I know. Stop looking at me, chat. <laughs> it, it takes a lot. If somebody's on a roll, sometimes it's hard to, you know, get them to take a break, to take a step back and analyze things. Mm. So, mm -hmm. you know, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. So yeah. massive respect on that front, because uh, I know uh, I know quite a few people. Um, yes, I know myself included. Um, that could <laughs> that could use that. But yeah. So in that regard right Let, let's let's talk a little bit in the future then give give or take because it depends on person to person community to community are there any big plans you know coming up for pride vr well yeah we, we're looking to plan two little pride concerts towards the end of the month um one will be at the great pug we've been starting to cultivate a hangout event there on thursdays uh so i think the last thursday in the month we're looking to make it a little bit of a pride concert uh because we, we cultivate that event as a bit of a not just show up and hang out but having a little bit of a like kind of planned entertainment to it so uh typically musician or two um kind of playing the downstairs bar area or upstairs stage um we have some folks on staff that like to rp uh, RP the bar staff for the Great Pug. Um, uh, one of our community partners, uh, operator uh, of the Great Religion, and Celeste AI to to hang out with Celeste, the chatbot. Um, that's always a fun little bit there. And we also are planning trying to plan like late night DJ, just like chilling out in the bar area, playing mic over music kind of thing. And the last Thursday, we're looking to make it a bit of a, like a special Pug Pride concert, possibly cultivating a little bit of a larger scale concert. I just been talking with them, um, uh, someone in the community, Jumbe Dragonfire of the Virtual Live Performing. They've been a really uh, wonderful man i uh, given uh some advice here and there and so yeah we're looking to possibly cultivate like develop a pride concert at the end of the month that we would hold in there because they have like a music hall concert venue world it's uh it's really beautiful yeah kind of gives you that really theatrical um, aesthetic uh giving me ideas we should try to play in like uh, a <laughs> game musical there <laughs> kind of thing i think that'd be really cool um i don't know that i've I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like it, maybe it's been done, but I certainly don't hear about musicals happening in, in VR a lot if they are happening. Um, that's a good question. I I mean, there's plenty of, like, short films and movies out. Mm -hmm. Musicals, though? Yo, Post Editor Nova, get on that. Right. If there's any musicals, just slap slap one of them right here. <laughs> slap one right, right up on the know. screen. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do some research. Yeah, Post Editor Nova, slap one right there. Um... <laughs> But yeah, so that'd be definitely an interesting concept, though, um, because I mean, realistically, right? There, there's so, so many types of you know LGBTQ creators out there, um, from world oh, yeah. world mm -hmm. creators, avatar creators, um, you know, big event organization staff, you know, um, even just there's so many many creators that are lgbtq mm. um you know it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's it's a it's a lovely lovely thing to see um you mm. know and that's one of that's one of the reasons why i started this podcast was because you know i i get to meet so many different people of so many different origins you know different you know mm -hmm. different points of life and you know that's one of the reasons why i love meeting new people meeting these you know content creators and all these amazing people community mm. leaders and stuff cuz i get to experience from their point of view what exactly you know what what made them do the things they want to do you know and it's stuff like that that leads to inspiration you know uh funny enough oh yeah right I say funny enough on uh, one of my previous episodes uh, with uh, Metaverse Degen, you know, uh, they were a huge inspiration on, you know, on the Nova Notes podcast and highly, mm -hmm. like highly entertaining dudes. You know, uh, if you if you never watch them, definitely go recommend checking them out. But, you know, mm -hmm. getting okay. getting to know a little bit more from their POV, you know about why they did what they did to make the metaverse degen podcast you know it's it's something that mm -hmm. gives me 
a little bit of motivation as well as inspiration when it comes to you know these these type of episodes because we do it in mm. different styles you know when it comes to camera work and you know visual representation and all that but it gives it gives a different outlook i guess the point i'm trying to make you know there are so many different outlooks on life you know and with how many people kind of fit you know i don't want to call it a category because that seems kind of kind of fucked up but <laughs> but to have so many people you know amazing people that are lgbtq and you know to have a group that where they can kind of all come together and you know celebrate the amazing stuff that comes with it you know that's it's awesome so you know as kind of to delve back into that um i guess one of the one of the main questions because i know you talked about how uh like your global vision so what exactly is the pride vr you know like mission or your vision i guess well, vision ultimately is cultivating community resources, helping onboard the community to VR, um, and I think my, my kind of third hope to see from our, our mission be cultivating kind of um, fundraising strategy for the community as well around uh, different particular uh, causes that may not get like broader attention i think oh absolutely so i was gonna say with, with that i guess one of my questions in that regard because you had mentioned prior that you were a specifically 18 plus community you know what what initially uh i i guess was there like a certain moment in time to where it just kind of clicked um to where you guys wanted to make that you know that age uh age decision yeah, it, it came after last June and the festival then, and when I was like kind of re-strategizing what our mission was and realizing that we really needed to be kind of operating more in the public scene and more at the, the gateway to VR chat. Um, mm. And to do so, you've got to be an all-inclusive community. Uh, by my own interpretation of VRChat Terms of Service, as well as the Trust and Safety Leads, public spaces of VRChat for 13+. plus uh, Communities are allowed to create rules, so long as they don't supersede one of VRChat's own rules. And one of VRChat's own rules is, well, public spaces are 13+. plus. And in that essence... I mean, there's the terms of service essence as well as the what are, who are we serving if we leave behind teenagers um, from what I'm sure a lot of us have seen in public spaces. We would be appalled at the idea of leaving anyone we personally knew that was a teenager alone in those spaces. So uh, I just simply could not abandon that set of the community simply to make certain folks like more comfortable like there are plenty of adult spaces throughout vr chat that are hella gay hella inclusive there are so many of them that it's just it's not something that's needed by the community in my opinion um what we need was something to operate at the gateway for everyone Providing peaceful spaces that everyone can come and, and bond and make friends at. Fair enough. Hello, everyone. Just want to interrupt the video right here. Uh, if you'd like to support me on any of my um, variety of content, uh, I do have a throne as well as a ko fi. So make sure you go check that out. I uh, want to thank you all so much for watching. Let's get back into the video. Yeah, and that's, I mean, with how, with how big, you know, not only pride vr but also the lgbtq community inside of vr chat is i mean you know for example and i'll throw it up on the screen post that or nova get to work um mm -hmm. you know with the lgbtq <laughs> community in vr chat you know having really almost twenty thousand members like holy shit that's a lot of people first and foremost um you know oh, but yeah. But not to mention Pride VR, you know, having, you know, a solid, like, I believe if I remember correctly, um, I want to say it's close to around 1,800 people. You know, that's still a pretty yeah, decent 1800 amount. 1,800 in that group, and we've got about 1,200 in the Discord. 
damn fair enough mm. i mean that's a that's a pretty decent oh, yeah that's mm. a pretty decent like one-to-one rate i mean realistically like i know a lot of mm. communities they don't have nearly that much to the discord servers when they do in the vr chat group so that's that's a very impressive thing mm. i do i do want to say that was yeah one thing i learned is that simply having a large uh vr chat group doesn't really mean you like have a generally large or engaged community at all um that was one of the things i learned very early on when i was uh kind of testing out running group lobbies off the the larger lgbtq group um simply just there being a bigger big big group doesn't mean that's that's a community doesn't mean you can throw a notification and fill up a lobby um that that takes real cohesive like strategy of you know regular events the right hangouts um it takes a lot and then engaging those those folks who want to also come and hang out and around discord and kind of cultivating extending their relationship like uh cultivation there too that's that's a whole nother another bit too mm-hmm. so I, I was gonna say right you know with with how much you know, it, it took you to get so many people engaged with mm-hmm. Pride VR and the LGBTQ community. You know, um, I guess for the general listening audience out there, um, is there anything like when it comes to, you know, being a person from the LGBTQ community, is there any advice you mm-hmm. can give to, you know, the public listening audience, you know, to kind of what? What would be the reason to, you know, join a community like Pride VR or the LGBTQ community as a whole? Hmm. Well, we are we're a wholesome bunch. We try to provide peaceful spaces as opposed to how I like to contrast our, our, our style uh, to other groups as where they like to build more harmonious spaces. So if you're looking for somewhere to freely express yourself, you know, we're a great spot for that. Um, there are a lot of folks that have come to me and they have gave me really, really it's been really heartwarming and I thank yous for for what we're doing around the Kirk at. I've I've known folks where they've come to me and have professed that they have built entire friend groups from uh hanging around there. Um so uh yeah. Looking for a peaceful space to vibe and make friends? The Queer Cat and the Discord are, are both well, great, great spots for that. And I hope to only keep well, improving them and being able to build them as more valuable spaces for folks to want to engage in other ways, too. Right? Hopefully, kind of cultivate the you know, class thing and uh, other resources for the community. I've been getting back into software development recently. And uh, working on a project for the community. Awesome, I was say hmm. definitely a definitely some wise words to say the least. You know, I was gonna say because I I've been to a few instances of the queer cat, and you know, speaking from you know pers- personal experience, it definitely is a it's definitely a welcoming environment compared to ninety nine point nine nine percent of black cats. I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, cause there was a, there was a community that I worked with for a little bit, um, who did a collaboration night with you guys. And that's actually how I first met you. Um, and we got to talk in regards <laughs> to some things, um, and definitely a, definitely a very, probably what the black cat realistically should be on a normal basis. Um, yeah. but that's, <laughs> That's my that's my take on it. Um, you know, realistically, <laughs> highly recommend going check out the Queer Cat instances. Speaking of which, when exactly do you guys host the Queer Cat instances? Queer Cat is actually up basically twenty four seven. It's always pretty much around. Um, there's no. It's had maybe a couple of days downtime over the course of the last uh, about six, three. It's been at least nine nine months that we've been running the queer cat um 
is the consistently the most uh, around instance that's moderated from any group. Whether our team has a moderator there around the clock, definitely not something we guarantee. But we do try to encourage the community to utilize the Discord. Uh, we have a channel called Kalama that people can write an at moderator's message and, and write a message to the moderator to hopefully get someone to come to the instance help. Um, which often it's not a crazy hour of the day and someone's around someone, someone gets there pretty quick I, I get real impressed when i'm like oh someone's talking call oh okay wait never mind sorry taking care of great <laughs> um i've i've been truly blessed and impressed with the the team we've cultivated for for moderation and how that's grown um, they've been doing a truly tremendous job recently um, um, been really heartwarming to see all the efforts that they put in, and it's part of what that's really encouraged me to get back into software uh, development and take on the project that I've been starting to build out recently, because that's actually part of that is developing tools for them um, to do their their moderation jobs easier. Fair enough. So, I mean that that's a really cool thing to say the least you know and definitely you know i know i'm not in any type of staff position with you guys but definitely shout out the staff you know for uh, you know keeping keeping things afloat over at those instances because uh <laughs> as as all of us vr chat players know uh yeah black cat is a uh, amazing world not the greatest place to start out eh but and yes, so many of us go through there. <laughs> it's and, wild. and it's still it's one so of the popular. most popular worlds to this day. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure last time I oh my gosh, I it was some ridiculously ludicrous number, but I, I saw the world visits uh on the black cat one day. I was like, holy cow, how many people have visited that world is uh nuts to say the least. I'll probably uh, throw something right, up there, yeah. but but yeah, no, it's <laughs> um definitely a massive number one i think it's one of the if not the biggest number on the entire platform um i guarantee somebody in the comments will probably yeah, you know correct me on it but is, um definitely it's got to be in the top mm. three if not the the top one of all time um but yeah so we, we've talked a lot about the queer cat you know are there are there any because we talked about a little bit about the great pug um you know, instances a little bit. Are there any other like um, main worlds you guys use for your events? Well, yeah, we've been running events out of the the Great Pug recently. Um, we've done a handful of things around like uh, doing little hangouts at just different worlds that folks in the team were interested in. Um, the group is open technically to anyone starting a group plus lobbies if they want to. Uh, and uh, we're kind of, we've been thinking about what we could do for kind of like an alternative hangout instance if we do like rotational something. Uh, I was just thinking, you know, maybe I should just leave our, our one of our alts in the like a, a ones box world. Uh, we've done that before, called it queer box. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Uh, one idea I've been having too, and wait, talk to our our mapping. Uh, need about is potentially starting to develop a like actual our own kind of hangout instance. Um, world that we might run. Maybe that we'll try to see about running that as a primary, and have a rotational through things like the queer cat and whatever else. Um, I've, uh, well, I'll see what the team comes up and what they want to build for that kind of space. Um, generally, the vibe that I, I have felt we should uh, aim for as a community with Pride VR is the more trying to recreate realistic sort of Pride experiences for folks in VR um, so that they, they can't experience th these things in physical space that at least they can come and kind of get a taste for what they would be like uh there but in vr instead and you know all the other 
crazy uh, <laughs> level of communities out there that, that do have their own pride events and stuff and have tons of community folks out there. They go have have claimed to the you know wild west of themes for for different events that we could we could possibly do as a community. Fair, that's fair. I mean, yeah. The, I mean, realistically, mm -hmm. right? The the limits are really endless, you know. So it's just mm -hmm. main. It's just actually pushing through and going for it, you know. And it depends on just what your mm -hmm. team can create. And me personally, right? Like I, like. I, I love that you guys do the, you know, the queer cat and, you know, all, all these other instances, but to have an established place that anybody can go to at any given time, you know, as I don't want to call it like a headquarters, but like, you know, just something that, ah, oh man, I guess the word, I guess a place to call home in that re regard, if that makes mm. sense. Um, but to have like no, a, a I, central hub, that, that'd be a better word, I guess, for it, like a central mm -hmm. hub, you know, that, you know, people can go to and, you know, kind of explore more about pride VR, more about the LGBTQ side of VR chat, you know, yeah. just have it all in one general place, you know, that way, if people are interested in this type of stuff, they can literally just search up pride or LGBTQ or something like that. I mean, there's, you can put whatever tags on the mm -hmm. world you want but just to have like a central hub would definitely be a cool idea you know maybe something down the line maybe you never know oh no that's actually that's been very much where my thinking has been recently um i think that's where i actually want to possibly encourage our, our mapping lead to get into for first big project for the community is actually just dive into that bit um because yeah i think that paired with um one of the things i part of the software project i'm taking on is uh, a bit of an ai chatbot um and the idea is for it to be uh, a little bit of a resource you know knowledge based resource about the lgbtq community um that folks can use to like learn about different aspects of the community um maybe get connected with uh resources that are online kind of thing um things of that sort of nature maybe provide some basic chat functionality we'll see we'll see uh, i've got infrastructure to run this stuff i gotta build out the code for it um so i've been starting to dive into that that's uh actually part of the partnership that I'm cultivating what I have with that operator is she'll be um she'll be helping with uh developing different bits there um like kind of like a toxicity detection system um so that's going to be very invaluable having her advice with uh, that stuff as I kind of cultivate build out this uh this little AI chatbot to be fun I've I've never done anything like that but you know uh, eighty percent of the time, I've built something in software. I've never done it before, so <laughs> that's fair enough. What is operand? I guess <laughs> no, definitely, definitely sounds like some amazing stuff coming. You know, to say the least. You know, I'm, I, I know mm -hmm. people listening out there, and I know myself included. Like, I'm definitely excited to see you know uh, future projects from you know the Pride VR community and the LGBTQ community. You know, uh. So I guess to kind of, because I know we've been talking a lot of like uh, related events, but just to kind of, just kind of switch it up a bit. So, you know, you've been around for, you said like a year and a couple months, correct? Yeah. So I guess, mm -hmm. I guess one of my questions for you, uh, since you didn't really kind of experience the origins of VR chat, like some players have. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Um. So I got to ask, so that means you started in like what, 2022, give or take, late 22? Uh, 2023, actually, it was January, early January. Oh, early January. Oh, so you, oh, it's even less for you. 2023, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. So I guess my question is, um, what's the, what's the weirdest thing you've ever experienced in a black cat? Usually sometimes just when people get really, really meme -y. And then they'll they'll go around, and sometimes it's been Uganda knuckles. Sometimes it's like, 
Um, usually just little goofy avatars of some sort. We had some little dance crew at one point with this one little... Oh gosh, what kind of avatar was that? It was a little furry creature of some sort. I can't quite recall. It was always, like, fun bits. So I think the one thing that I kind of love about the space we've cultivated around the crew cat is that uh, it's got a bit of that kind of chaos energy and vibe to it that you you get uh, at Black Hats and, like, randomness of goofiness stuff going on. But uh, we've uh, managed to cut out a lot of the toxicity. Fair enough. I mean, that's that's always a good thing to cut out toxicity, no matter, you know, where it's Mm. at realistically, right? So, you know, funny Mm -hmm. enough, um, so out of curiosity, because we are kind of getting... A little bit close to the end of the episode so where you know oh, where yeah. can people fo- for a bit. yeah fair i'll say so where <laughs> where can people find you where can people find your communities you know essentially give give the listeners essentially a place to you know tell them where they can find you all the community stuff uh anything you want in the description uh but yeah the floor is yours oh, sure Absolutely. So, everyone, if you're interested in joining Pride VR, the community, uh, the large LGBTQ group in VR chat is probably the most prominent way to find us. Uh, the group code for that is LGBTQ.7981. We also have our Discord vanity link, which is discord.gg slash Pride VR. Uh, if you, you know, throw that link into your browser, that will bring up the discord as well yeah fair enough i would say um you know and i guess Um, finally oh i would say go ahead (laughs) i guess could i make a little note about uh one of the other things i I forgot to mention that we're we're planning for this uh month was that um this avatar here uh after I, i i started it at the beginning of june and realized I'd actually picked up the skills enough to start kind of quickly developing some uh, avatars. And I, I did the, the pride theming myself of this shirt. So uh, we're going to be having a little sweepstakes pretty soon. Um, and for folks that win, will get re- free retexturings of any clothing they have that they would like to see in pride themes. And... Um, uh, top winner will get a like um, medium poor quality custom avatar made kind of thing. Fair enough. I mean, um, heck yeah, absolutely. You know, so yeah, definitely that's gonna be ran out of the Discord. Awesome. So yeah, please make mm. sure to go check out the Pride VR Discord. Make sure to join the VR yeah. chat groups. All that stuff. It will all be in the oh, description. God, yes. <laughs> um be gay and marry with us absolutely we hang out and um play games too absolutely. a lot of us play fortnite <laughs> so, no I'm, I'm kidding i'm teasing but uh <laughs> but, but anyways we play a lot of other things too though <laughs> fair enough well miss frizzy i <laughs> want to thank you so much for coming on the nova notes podcast Aww. Um, it was, Thank you so much for having me. This has been a pleasure. Yeah, of course. Much, much, much appreciated. <laughs> um, but anyways, ladies, gentlemen, everybody inside and outside the ballpark, LGBTQ friendos and everyone alike, this has been episode 17 of the Nova Notes podcast. Happy Pride. Happy Pride Month. Uh, if you are uh, interested <laughs> in checking out some of the other episodes, uh, please make sure to go check those out. There's some amazing creators as, in there as well um, that are also in the LGBTQ community. So please make sure to go check them out as well. Um, if you did like this episode, please make sure to leave a comment down below. Smack that like button. Hit that subscribe button with the bell. You know, because if you're already coming back to check out some of the episodes, <laughs> why not? You're already coming back anyway. So... Once again, Miss Frizzy, thank you once again for coming on the podcast. Uh, thank you. And I will see you in the next episode. <laughs> Happy Pride Month and take it easy. Bye, everyone.